I'm Tammy Moskal, and I started my career as a vertical turbine application engineer, and I currently am a director of product safety compliance and engineering services for Xylem. I've been uh, director for three years now. I love Xylem. Um, our tagline is let's solve water. Uh, xylem itself, the word comes from the Greek. It's the fibrous material in plants that moves water. And um, what, a, what a better name for a pump company. And uh, we, I believe, we walk the talk. We want to solve water and help solve water around the world and helping our customers. So it's that's why I get a lot out of what I do every day, a lot of job satisfaction. I was uh, in fourth grade and did a report about what you want to be when you grow up. And I thought I wanted to be a uh, math uh, person and um, theoretical math, actually. And uh, my dad looked at my report and said, well, this isn't done because you didn't say anything about applied math. And I didn't know what that was. So I went back to the library and uh, learned about engineering. And I fell in love with engineering. And so then I decided right then and there I wanted to be an engineer. I grew up in the suburbs of Detroit. And so everything was about the automotive industry. So I didn't really think about the pump industry per se. I thought pumps were, you know, water pumps on cars, you know, or that. I was, but I was kind of a gearhead. So, you know, I played with mechanical stuff and things like that. So it, I guess pumps was just an extension of that. Well, so when I first came out of uh, my, my, my bachelor's degree, my first job I got was with the utility company because I thought everybody needs electricity. And so I worked for Commonwealth Edison in Chicago and I was the rotating equipment expert. And pumps is obviously one of the rotating equipments. And if you think about it, fans are simply pump air as opposed to water and turbines pump steam instead of water. But in a way, they're all pumps. So um, I kind of been doing it all along anyhow. But my first job, back to your first question, my first job in the pump industry, when I moved over from, from power generation, from being the customer to being a manufacturer, so to speak, was actually in the applications area. I helped solve a lot of problems for people and, and businesses and I design solutions to complicated system problems. I would encourage them to follow the things that they're interested in, the things they're passionate about, and uh, if they're, I was myself interested in making the world a better place, whether it was electricity or water, providing something that people need that really can change the world. And as I was growing up, there would always seem to be a war or a shortage of oil. And as I aged a little bit and started having kids of my own and then they were growing up, I saw that, yeah, oil is still thought about and you know disputed and the price of oil determines a lot of things, but I also saw the change in how important water is. And in my mind, water is kind of becoming the new oil. So, um, and I'm passionate about, you know, this world has been around a long time. Hopefully it's going to be around a lot longer. And if you keep with something you're interested in, but not be afraid to fail. Um, I've had a lot of things I've done that are mistakes that turned out to be giving me more experience in something that I didn't expect. And it's, it's been really good for my career and for myself. So I started off my education at West Point, uh, just studying mechanical engineering. Uh, I went from there and to Lawrence Technological University in 
south of southeastern Michigan. And my education when I was a senior in college, I got the uh, some award, was an engineer of the year award or something like that. And they were asking, they were interviewing people and asking questions, okay, you know, to, to say about that. And what you, at the time I didn't, I didn't yet have a job. I was looking for a job, but I didn't yet have a, 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 a an offer on the table, so to speak. And um, they asked about, you know, do you want to, because it was Southeastern East, do you want to work for one of the big three or whatever? And I said, it really doesn't matter because in engineering, you know, you can use engineering and pumps in everything from toothpaste to peanut butter to automotive to aerospace to almost any industry. So I really feel like what I chose and what I was interested in had so many opportunities and I still feel that way today. One of them is to not be afraid to fail. So when you know, you're asked and you'll be asked, do you wanna take this project or do you wanna try this challenge or are you up for this? You know, it, 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 starting off in the military, they always tell you never volunteer. Right, but you're gonna get volunteered or voluntold <laughs> or whatever. And if it's a job, you know, you're paid to do something. Um, and, and so one of the pieces of advice that, that I think is really good is not be afraid to, to fail or to, to try something new because you're gonna, even if you fail, you're gonna learn from that. But the other piece of advice was to listen and learn. And I have learned so much from others and learned that everyone has something to contribute and that usually there's like 10 sides to a story and sometimes you only think about one or two, like your side and the opposite side, but you don't think about all the nuances. And that came into play very early in my career when I got the opportunity to work on a, a, a project and as part of that, I also learned about root cause analysis. And in that learning, it's like, usually there's more than one root cause. There's things that add together to create the root cause that caused the failure. So by listening to all the different points of view, you usually can get a better picture of what's going on. I've been very lucky. I've gotten to work on a number of development projects. And, and by that, I don't just mean like pump design projects where you basically design a new hydraulic, but also uh, uh, d development projects where you're developing a new software or a new tool to help your customer select the pump. And all the way back to um, one of my first, I, I had a beautiful opportunity. I'm currently working for my third pump company. And um, so early in my career, I worked on a project where there was a curve selection program. But currently, in my current job, I'm working on, we are improving our selection tool set for our customers to make us easier for them to, to utilize. And there's nothing more rewarding than making it easier for people to understand your product and how to use it. I, I think professional development is something that um, is important. I think it's difficult. I've had the opportunity to have some really good bosses and they have uh, had a number of supervisors that have taken the time with me to actually have a very good, honest conversation. Um, pretty much anyone, if they're actually watching this, they'll know themselves the things they're weak in and they need to work on and the things that they're stronger in. And it's nice when you can actually have a, a, a trusting relationship with somebody, whether it's your boss or a mentor or a coach, and um, I've been blessed and, and people have taken time to, to share with me things. 
and I think I am a better person because of it, because then I can go work my own program to become better and develop myself. Well, I'm a workaholic, but I also like to have fun. So um, I probably would tell my younger self um, to, to make sure that I get a little more sleep sometimes uh, because I, I tend to work hard and play hard. Also, uh, gosh, I love the teamwork. And so sometimes I guess I probably did too much myself and, and I didn't always, I was maybe afraid to ask for help and teammates were there. I've learned they're there to help you. So it's okay to ask you.